guys as you can see we are here oh I forgot to focus again we are here in the beautiful Marugame Jo which is in Kagawa Ken Prefecture Kagawa Prefecture in Japan it's an amazing beautiful little castle small castle in Kagawa it's actually free admission free parking it's a beautiful place to come and check it out if you're ever in town I recommend it highly recommend it especially if you see my instagram i recently did a shoot of the light up exhibition that they did well actually they're still doing it's gonna be taking place throughout this month all the way up to november i believe right now i'm shooting with the per gear 12 millimeter f2 handheld yeah right now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna shoot head on to the castle so yes guys we will be doing a diffraction test i want to see how well this pergia 12 millimeter f2 lens performs with diffraction and the reason why is because i want to shoot this lens more close down like at f8 f11 and the reason is because of the the reason is because this lens has such a curvature like a focal curvature that is just man i was shooting low light last night and even though I'm shooting flat onto the castle at f2, f2.8, even I went down even at f4, and it was still not completely in focus. All the side of the castle, the, the, the walls on the sides were all blurred out. So it was like, is it really that bad, the curvature? So I wanna see how much do I need to stop down to get an overall image to be sharp? and also diffraction. When does it start kicking in and really ruin the image? So we're gonna head over to the same spot again. I'm gonna take similar shots. Well, the thing is we're no longer in low light. It's not nighttime anymore. It's just beautiful blue sky with no clouds. So we're gonna do handheld everything. Um, but still, I wanna really make sure diffraction as well as how much the, the side, I don't even care about the edges. All I care about is the sides of the image to stay sharp when I stop down. So I'm gonna try to get the squeeze, the quality out of this 12 millimeter F2 lens. All right, so we'll see you soon. And yes, that left edge seems to be a little bit blurrier than the right side. Wide open, the center sharpness is great. And as you stop down, every increment sharpens up a little bit more, but you don't quite reach all the edges and corner sharpness until you're like F16. And after that, it's just downhill. Diffraction does really kick in and set in at F22. Now here we go, stepping outside in front of the castle where last time I took the low light pictures and I noticed that left side was a little blurry. Well, again, same old story. Shooting low light wide open does show that the left side gets blurry. And again, actually the right side is sharp, strange. Again, we come with the same conclusion. F16 is the sharpest point. 
Now that's all fine and dandy when we're shooting here on the daylight, but shooting at night at such high aperture as f16 and f22 means we're gonna have to risk noise by shooting in a high ISO or introduce camera shake by having a long exposure. And there you have it guys. After taking a look at the pictures, the stills I took, this very good 12 millimeter f2 lens for form the edges were pretty bad even all the way up to f8 i had to stop down to like f16 to get a decent edge that was really unfortunate though you know because you're already in the diffraction territory so that was too bad i didn't really expect it to do that bad but hey you get what you pay for right kit lens on the other hand i shot with the 18 f2.8 to f to f4 the 18 to 55 kill lens and that one did pretty good pretty much you get edge edge sharpness all the way through <laughs> it's crazy that kit lens amazing i don't think i'll ever sell it i don't know maybe i will for a, a really good prime i'm debating to sell it at the 23 mil f2 or the kit lens i'm still hanging on to that 23 mil because it has weather stealing. Huge bee, get away, it's a hornet. Oh my goodness, what? Why are you bad? I'm not a flower. Get away from me. But anyway, going back to this lens, I'm basically gonna be getting rid of this lens. Probably end up getting the seven artisans, 70 mil f1.4. I wanna do some astrophotography. And with the edges this lens has, it'll be impossible. I don't know if I have a bad copy, a defect or what, because I do notice the lens is actually crooked. So I don't know if that affects the image quality, but yeah, can't keep this lens. If it's gonna have horrendous, horrible edges. So gotta say goodbye. If you guys found this video helpful, if you have any other question about this lens, any comments, post them down below. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys on the next one. Peace. Guys, by all means, do not think I'm bashing this lens. This lens can take some amazing photos as you're watching right now, but it's just a characterized lens. It's designed for some things it does well, other things it doesn't do as well. It just it hasn't fed my personal needs. Therefore, I am departing from this lens, but by all means, if you are in a search for an ultra-wide, pretty fast f2 aperture lens for APS-C, by all means, go to Instagram, look at all the people that are posting amazing pictures with this lens. So I believe it's worth the shot if you are into that kind of photography. I'm not as good with ultra wide. I'm more of a mid telephoto portrait kind of lens guy. So I'll be sticking with my 35 and 50 millimeters. If you guys are curious of checking out more specs and prices on this lens, I will leave the link in the description. So thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great one.